Why did you get vaccinated against pneumococcal pneumonia? I help others, but I need to help protect myself. Honestly, I couldn't afford to get sick. I want to be there for this one. I can't if I'm sick. Pneumococcal pneumonia is a potentially serious bacterial lung disease. You may be at risk if you're 19 to 64 with certain chronic conditions or if you're 65 or older. Don't pause a moment longer. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about getting vaccinated against pneumococcal pneumonia today. You got the rock star DNA and it came <laughs> flying out of you, sis. Well, that was also extensive rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow on ET, Riley Keough. Before the finale of Daisy Jones and the Six, we've got the latest on her upcoming court battle with grandmother Priscilla Presley. Yeah, before we go, if you follow Oprah Winfrey and Gail King on social media, then you know their latest road trip took them to Jordan. Yes, they visited Petra, AKA Rose City. They rode happening now. A train slams into a car transport vehicle in shirts and it is all caught on camera. Coming up, we'll tell you about the drivers that captured this video and also they share their concerns about this railroad crossing. More drizzly, damp conditions on the way, but then a cold front arrives, giving us the chance of thunderstorms. I'm gonna talk about when that hits and what it means for our weekend in just a bit. Watch out for a lot of activity over at the Alamo Dome. The FBI and SAPD working together. The kind of training they'll be conducting and how it's going to affect people in the area. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, it is a site that drivers in shirts see far too often. A train crash. We're going to get to that story in just a moment. First, we're going to talk about. Pardon me. So let's tell you about this accident. There was a busy stretch uh, of road near Clements High School where this happened. Uh, a train slammed into an 18 wheeler that got stuck at the crossing at Shirts Parkway and FM 78. And the video is just incredible. We're well, going to show it to you in just a moment. But uh, first, we're going to go to our next story. If we can get some direction from the control room, please. All right, we're going to go over to an FBI training program, and we have got John Paul Baraja standing by. Who's live at the scene? Yeah, we have federal and local agencies that are going to be taking part in training today at the Alamo Dome, and so they're telling people who live near that area to be ready. So, JP, are you seeing or hearing anything right now? So far, not much activity, and we've circled around the Alamo Dome a handful of times and haven't seen any emergency vehicles just yet. We have seen a group of people start gathering here behind us in the, probably in the last 20, 30 minutes ago, so still not a lot of action. All that being said, these uh, activities were trainings, I should say, should have been started around 5 o'clock, and we just hit the 5 o'clock hour. Now, as mentioned, uh, the FBI San Antonio Division, SAPD, and San Antonio Fire will be having joint trainings here. We don't know what exactly or what type of scenarios uh, will look like here, but we do know that they are emergency response type scenarios and that they will have no impact to residents in the area. But that being said, uh, if you drive by down here and see a bunch of emergency vehicles, helicopters and uh, uniformed men and women, you might be caught off guard by it or startled by it. So make sure to pass all that information along that they will be having trainings here at the Alamo Dome. Also worth noting that the U.S. military also had uh, trainings here at the Alamo Dome back in August, and that caused quite a bit of commotion for those who did not know about it because they had the Black Hawk helicopters. So just keep that in mind and pass the message along to everybody who lives in the area or might be traveling this way and we'll just have to wait and see what exactly the trainings will look like here today. Ursula, Stephanie. Thank you so much, John Paul. Appreciate that. Meantime, a man who got caught on camera sexually assaulting a co-worker will now spend seven to 14 years in prison for the crime. 33 year old Angel Ruiz scheduled a sentence rather yesterday. It was for an assault that happened a year ago at a bar that he worked at. According to an affidavit, a security camera inside recorded the attack after which he stole the victim's phone and cash. Ruiz will be required to serve at least seven of his 14 year sentence before he's eligible for parole. He also still faces firearm possession and DWI charges in two other counties. Those are still pending. And now a developing story from the north side. One person was killed in a house fire. We're now learning that that victim is an 80 year old man. That fire broke out around 730 this morning on West Summit Avenue near Blanco Road and I-10. 
Look at how powerful those flames were. When firefighters got there, those flames were spewing from the roof. The fire department says that a couple was inside the home at the time, but only the woman made it out alive. As for the man who we told you about a moment ago, we're told that he had been upstairs sleeping. The flames were just way too intense for firefighters to go in and try and pull him out. And investigators are saying that a space heater is what caused that fire. We also now know the name of a man who was hit and killed yesterday morning by a car in shirts. We first told you about the story last night on the night beat. He is now identified as 67 year old Robert Bechtold. That's according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. That crash happened on FM 1518 North near Hollering Vine. Shirts police say Bechtold was walking in the middle of the road when he was hit by that car. The driver did stop to help and that's why police say that he will not be charged. Now happening right now, a fight for higher pay. The staff at the San Antonio ISD want more money, so they're rallying to get it. The San Antonio Alliance planned that rally. They represent the school employees in that district. The group is going to go before the district's board and present different pay scenarios for the 2023 to 24 school year. If you remember, last year the SAISD school board approved a 3% raise for full-time staff, which went into effect this school year. Meantime, the SACC staff celebrating a little victory. That is the first step towards something they want on a larger scale. The board executives of this nonprofit art education organization have now voted to recognize their union. This decision made official during a hearing late last month. Originally, the SACC union wanted voluntary recognition, but the board rejected that. Instead, they opted to go through the National Relations Board. So up next for the union is to meet with the board and begin bargaining processes next month. All right, we told you about this at the top of the show. We had a little technical glitch, but now we're ready to show you the site that mm. drivers and shirts say that they see far too often a train crash on a busy stretch of road near Clemens High School. Really an awful one this morning. A train slammed right into an 18 wheeler that got stuck at the crossing at Shirts Parkway in FM 78. RJ Marquez spoke with a mother and a daughter who caught this crash on camera and they're also sharing their concerns about that crossing. Cheryl Penny was taking her daughter Asia to school when they came across an 18-wheeler stuck on the train tracks on Shirts Parkway. I was blowing my horn and yelling like, hey, back up because this, this is going to happen. So you might as well get out the way so you don't get hurt. The train slammed into the 18-wheeler, cutting it in half and sending a pickup truck that it was hauling flying through the air. Her daughter got video on her cell phone. Everything happened so fast. I just like, I was trying to like hurry up and like videotape. I was like, no, it's too late. Shirts police tell us that no one was injured in this crash. And in fact, the driver did everything right in this case after he got stuck. He was on the phone with 911 trying to get the train stopped, but it was a little too little too late. Shirts police say the truck did not have enough clearance and became high centered. They also say if they are notified early enough, they can call Union Pacific to stop oncoming trains. If it's a regular vehicle going across, there's no issue, but the bigger trucks, they're the, they're the ones that kind of need to be aware about the clearance. This stretch of road has been no stranger to these types of crashes. Last September, a train collided with a big rig down the road at FM 78 and 1st Street, causing a traffic backup for hours. Shirts police are looking into more signage at these busy crossings and intersections. Penny says with her daughter soon driving herself to school, it's something else to worry about. Because we hear about these things happening, but when it goes on right in front of your face, like so most of my friends are like, wow. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. So now an important warning for new parents. Another type of infant formula is being recalled. This time it's from the Gerber brand. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains that and also why some foods that are still at Walmart and Trader Joe's are also being recalled. Parent alert, some Gerber powdered infant formula is recalled because it might be contaminated with potentially dangerous bacteria. This is Gerber Good Start Sooth Pro, made between January 2nd and 18th. The FDA says Cronobacter Sakazaki may have been present at the plant. No illnesses have been reported, but customers should throw it out or ask the company for a refund. If you bought these snacks at Walmart, check the box. Cleo Snacks is recalling strawberry granola and Greek yogurt parfait bars because of possible listeria contamination. The expiration date is April 30th. Take them back or toss them out. 
have fruit in the freezer? The company that makes Trader Joe's organic tropical fruit blend made with strawberries is recalling it. The strawberries may be linked to an outbreak of hepatitis A illnesses. The best buy dates are all in April, May, and June of next year. Again, don't eat it. Either take it back to Trader Joe's or just throw it out. We have the specific product codes on the infant formula, the fruit, and the snacks on our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And look at this. We actually have a little bit of sunshine out there right now. And you know the drizzle and sprinkles this morning? It was so persistent, it actually added up to a little bit of something. More than just a nuisance rain. That was nice. 0.21 inches today since midnight. So better than nothing with all that dampness. It actually added up to something. 71 degrees. That's our high temperature. And we could still even gain a degree or so here over the next hour. So we'll have a full update coming up at six on what we actually make it to today. Check out our weather watchers. Leon Springs 0.2 inches in Roland's backyard. We got 0.07 in Bernie. And for the most part, we had uh, a few hundredths of an inch, uh, even a tenth of an inch or so, according to our weather watchers. Some pockets of higher amounts, such as locally, and then even Myco with two tenths of an inch. But hey, we were fortunate in those areas to have that persistent drizzle actually add up to something. This evening, clouds filling in again, drizzle starting up around midnight. We'll talk about more rounds of drizzle, a cold front, some storms with that front, when that'll arrive, and what it means for the weekend in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. Today, the day former President Donald Trump says he was notified through a leak that he would be arrested in Manhattan. However, so far, no evidence that's going to happen. But it does appear that the Manhattan District Attorney is finishing up a criminal investigation into the former president. ABC's Morgan Norwood with where that stands and how Capitol Hill is preparing for potential protests. Demonstrators from both sides of the aisle starting to gather in New York City as the Manhattan District Attorney's criminal investigation into former President Donald Trump appears to be nearing its end. Fencing going up around the Capitol in Washington, D.C., and metal barricades at the courthouse in Manhattan, where the grand jury will decide on any potential charges. Trump calling on his supporters to protest when he made an unverified claim over the weekend that he would be arrested Tuesday in connection to the case, which is looking into hush money payments made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 election. Intelligence bulletins obtained by ABC News warn of a significant increase in threats and general violent rhetoric and say some of Trump's most ardent supporters are still willing to fight on his behalf. We, we are always prepared. I can say that from here. Uh, I'm just not going to get into hypotheticals uh, or uh, any potential scenarios, but we are always prepared. On Monday, attorney Bob Costello took the stand in defense of Trump. The only thing I'm doing is trying to tell the truth to the grand jurors, but Michael Cohen is far from solid evidence. Michael Cohen, Trump's former fixer, also testifying last week about the $130,000 check he wrote to Daniels a month before the election. He says at Trump's direction, later serving federal prison time in part for that payment. Experts say the payment may have violated campaign finance laws. Trump's legal team saying he paid Daniels to protect his family. And this investigation, just one of several probes into former President Donald Trump, including a federal investigation involving the potential mishandling of classified documents and obstruction of justice. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. It is almost fiesta time in San Antonio, but what can you expect this year? There are some changes, including a change of venue. All right, now we want to give you a live look at the roads out there right now. Yeah, situation right there at I-35 at New Braunfels. You can see those two right lanes going especially slowly, but yeah, traffic there down to a crawl. Not looking so much that way over on the other side, but just letting you know it's best to use your navigation system just in case you need to, to work around any other traffic that's going around. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom, and here's what's coming up today on the news at 6 o'clock. Two attempted abductions in San Antonio last week, both not far from two local schools. As police put out the word about the suspect and they try to find him, we tell you what precautions students and families are now taking. Plus, the first Ukrainian restaurant in San Antonio is now officially open. One of the owners has family and friends that are fighting in Ukraine. At 6, we'll explain how the couple is giving back. And yes, we'll show off some of the food.
All that and more coming your way today on the News at 6. Thank you so much, Myra. Changes can be exciting when it comes to Fiesta, and this year is no different. The biggest change, there is a new location for Fiesta Fiesta. Organizers announcing today that it'll be at Travis Park this year. The move coming because of that ongoing construction at both Hemisphere Park as well as Alamo Street. But organizers say that it's giving them a new opportunity to get out of their comfort zone and try something new. So people are really excited about going down to Travis Park to celebrate different fiesta, different festivals. And we just think it's a natural move to have Fiesta Fiesta at Travis Park. It's going to be a great experience for the crowds. The people are going to love the, the area. Something else new this year, two first time events, each hosted by Central Catholic High School and the Girl Scouts Fiesta beginning on April 20th. I was there. I had a real horse, not a <laughs> horse. <laughs> All right, we've got a live cam out there right now. Ooh, looks muggy. It's like the, the blue skies, they, they're just, they want to come out, but nah, not gonna happen, right? Yep. 70 degrees out there right now, 515. Quite a change from what we had just a few days ago. It's warmer, a lot yeah. warmer. Yeah, making it into the low 70s for a change. That's nice, and even more rain chances ahead. We'll have more drizzly dampness starting after midnight. It's going to happen again as we get into Thursday morning. We have that 20% chance for a real shower, but mostly just that light stuff, that drizzle and sprinkles. By Friday morning, early, 40% chance of some scattered storms likely to develop. Let's actually talk about our next system that's headed our way. Taking a look at our overall pattern, we had those areas of sprinkles and now even a little bit of clearing out there, especially along the Rio Grande. That's where we've had a little more sun. We'll take a look at how that's impacted temperatures in a moment. But first, notice a swirl near California, especially San Francisco. This is the next disturbance that's been moving on shore and bringing them more moisture and high elevation snowfall. This counterclockwise swirl, that's the next upper level disturbance that's going to head our way and it's going to help push a cold front through our neck of the woods, basically a Pacific front. So and don't expect a big temperature drop behind it, just a change in humidity and it acting as a triggering mechanism for some showers and storms. So let's take a look at our future cast and we're going to fast forward to Thursday 9 p.m. As that cold front drops into Texas, we'll see a line of showers and thunderstorms develop mainly to the northwest of San Antonio. And then into early Friday morning, some of that activity could just clip us here in town. But it does look like most of it's going to be between Del Rio, San Angelo, Waco, Dallas and Wichita Falls. But again, about a 40% chance we just get clipped on the tail end of that line of showers and thunderstorms. And there is the off chance that we could have some severe storms out there as well. There's that off chance that could happen, particularly up in the hill country in Edwards Plateau. I don't think so much around San Antonio. Let's talk temperatures and dew points, humidity, 71 degrees right now. So warmer than the past several days, still below average for this time of year. Dew point of 66, that is way up compared to where it was the past few days. Dew points have been on the rise because of that southeasterly wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico, and that's given us that higher relative humidity. And you feel the mugginess as well. So there's more moisture in the air. You can feel it, and it, you could actually see it today because it led to that drizzle last night and then the drizzle lasting most of the day today. Dew points even in the upper 60s on the east side of town in Stinson Airport, 68 degree dew point. It's going to be very muggy. You'll notice the stickiness the next couple of days, Wednesday and Thursday. Then we talked about that cold front. Now it's a Pacific front, but it's still going to drop the humidity, bringing in that westerly wind. So the dew points plummet back down to 40 on Friday afternoon and then down closer to 30 for the dew point temperature on Saturday. So that front kickstarting a few showers and thunderstorms early Friday and then really dropping the humidity for Friday afternoon on into the weekend. And that means some cooler mornings this weekend compared to what we're having this week. Now where we've had the sun, 80 degrees, Catula 83, Carrizo Springs 81. You can tell just by looking at the temperatures where the clouds really stuck around. You know, 76 Pleasanton, 69 in Gonzales and 70 right now in Kennedy. Bulverde's at 68, Hondo 74 and 68 in Seguin. Tomorrow we start the day mid 60s. So temperatures not dropping very much overnight. It'll be a muggy night with that drizzle developing and a few sprinkles through the morning commute. So another damp morning commute, but I don't think we're going to see quite as much in terms of 
the dampness. It's not going to add up like it did in some locations today. Actually squeezing in some sunshine again tomorrow afternoon. 80 degrees and a bit of a breeze. South southeasterly wind at 10 to 20, so a little breezy at times. Making it to 82 in Floresville and Poteet. Utopia 81 along with New Braunfels and Canyon Lake 79 the high t temperature tomorrow even warmer on Thursday. It's going to start the same, but by the afternoon we get to 85 despite that, you know, Pacific cold front some cooler mornings this weekend, but high still near 80 Friday and Saturday and more chances of rain. Yeah, some like light that. chances. Yeah, thank you, Adam. All right, so the Spurs are in New Orleans, <laughs> yep. and of course, Pop had some words. Please share with us. Yeah, so the last game they were down 22 points at uh -huh. halftime and if you've been around, you know Pop, based on what Spurs have told us, has a temper in the locker room and his guys are not playing so well. So they were down by 22. The Spurs were asked, what did Pop have to say that inspired you guys? And in the NFL, Brandon Cooks is ready to play for a winner. Coming up. Hey Cowboys Nation, Brandon Cooks here. So I'm gonna let y'all know I'm excited to be here. I look forward to going to work. Um, and thank you for uh, welcoming me and my family here to Cowboys Nation. Brandon Cooks is officially a member of the Dallas Cowboys after signing his contract in Big Board Sports. The Spurs will tip off a four game road trip tonight in New Orleans against the Pelicans. San Antonio is fresh off that 24 point comeback win Sunday afternoon, 126 to 118 versus Atlanta. The Spurs allowed the Hawks 83 points on 60% shooting in the first half, and they trailed by 22 at the break. So, what did Coach Pop say to them at halftime? Because whatever it was, worked. Um, well, it was a lot of choice of words. <laughs> it was a lot of choice words, and, um, I mean, ultimately, like, we knew we could do better. Like, 83 and a half is unacceptable, you know, and, and we hold ourselves to a higher standard than that. And, um, you know, everybody stepped up in the second half and stepped up on the defense. And, yeah, we make shots, but uh, a team like that, you got you to gotta, you gotta play defense and, and play for each other. Pels will host the Spurs tonight at 7. Devin, Keldon, Zach, and Jeremy are all out. Dallas Cowboys traded with the Houston Texans for wide receiver Brandon Cooks and Dallas and Houston a 2023 fifth round pick and a 2024 sixth round selection in return. Cooks wanted out of Houston last season and the Cowboys were interested in him then, but the Texans kept Cooks on the roster and he wasn't happy about that. During a conference call with the media yesterday, Cooks said better late than never. He joins the Cowboys after three seasons in Houston. The Texans won just 11 games during his time there, whereas the Cowboys won 12 games each of the last two seasons and they made the the playoffs going from a losing team to a winning one is great and Cooks is ready to go. I tell you, I couldn't be more hungry. Um, the last three years was, is what it is, you know. Um, but I tell you, you're stepping into a locker room like this in an organization. I um, mean, you got those three years under your belt like that. I mean, that feel is just uh, definitely feeling the fire and that hunger to be able to come out here. Um, and just show up and, and help my team win. I, I can't wait. I truly can. And now in his 10th NFL season, Cooks has tied the record for most traded player in NFL history at four. He's tied with Hall of Fame running back Eric Dickerson, and that's per NFL stats. All right, Larry, thank you so much. You're welcome. And we'll be right back. Tomorrow, another round of drizzles, some light sprinkles, a few hundredths of an inch here and there. If we're lucky, we could squeeze out a little bit more in spots like we did today. But then the sun coming out a little bit sooner in the afternoon, early afternoon, 1, 2 o'clock, some breaks in those clouds, making it up to 80 degrees. You'll notice the mugginess. The humidity swept away for Friday and Saturday. Chance of storms there, 40% early Friday. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching the News at 5. World News is next. See you at 6.